you know, Jesus is the, the God child. Jesus is the door. He's the bread of life. He's the bridegroom. He's the bright and morning star. He's the lamb. He's the cornerstone. He's the governor. He's the great I am. He's the light of the world. He's the living stone. He's the living water. He's the true vine. And I could go on and on. Amen? When we refer to Jesus, He's many things. He's all in all. And He's everything to us. Amen? And although Jesus is a lot of things, the one thing I want to focus on this morning is Jesus is the truth. He said in John, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And although this may not sound much like a Christmas message this morning, ultimately it is. Because we're talking about the gift that was given to us. Amen? Truth doesn't seem to matter as much today. Have you realized that? I mean, even in, in, in many churches, uh, truth has uh, taken a turn. Uh, we see truth ignored by many, or we see truth uh, uh, shaped to however we want it to fit into our lives uh, today. Uh, uh, it's reshaped, it's ignored. Uh, I'm reminded of one of my college professors, uh, Dr. Brooke, who uh, once said, many will not allow the truth to interfere with their thinking. And I see a lot of that today, where people do not allow the truth to interfere with their thinking. They want to think what they want it to be like, amen? Not what it really is like. And uh, uh, in, in John 8, 32, I want to read that to you. It says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, many people misquote that verse, and they'll say, the truth will set you free. Has anybody ever heard it that way? That's not what it says. It does not say the truth will set you free. It tells us knowing the truth will set us free. You have to know the truth. In order for the truth to make us free, we have to know the truth. And the truth is Jesus is the Messiah. And I unashamedly stand before you and say Jesus is the only way. He's the truth, the life. And no one comes to the Father except him and to believe anything else is to believe a lie and I believe that needs to be proclaimed today that Jesus is the way and it says that we are set free you shall know the truth and you shall be set free and how are we set free we're set free spiritually you see because until we know the truth we are spiritually bound we're bound up spiritually we're in bondage to sin but knowing the truth will set us free and, and not, not just knowing the truth, but we also have to believe the truth. If you know the truth and believe the truth, then it says you shall be set free. You will be set free from a bondage of sin that we're all born in. We're all born in sin, and we, as we know the truth, we're set free. And uh, uh, I fear today in, in many churches, uh, to be politically correct, and, and if you know me, I, I'm not all that PC, and I'm not ashamed of that either. But to be uh, a politically correct, many creatures avoid or water down the truth. But Jesus said He is the way, not a way. Amen? He's the only way. Some have completely changed their theology. It's called gospel of inclusion. Has anybody ever heard of that? And what that, what that means is they claim that Jesus saves all people no matter what they believe or, or no matter what actions they take. Thank God for people like uh, uh, Ruth Lutz Graham. Do you know who she is? You ever heard of a guy named Billy Graham? Well, it's, it's Billy Graham's sister. And during an interview, they tried to uh, 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 trap her in a hard question about those who died in the World Trade Center. Uh, uh, on September the 11th. And let me just share a little bit about that interview with you. The, inter the interviewer says, since you believe that you have to accept Christ to go to heaven, doesn't that mean uh, that the Jews and Muslims who died on that day will go to hell? 
She didn't blench. She didn't change the subject. She quoted John 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, it doesn't matter how good of a person we are. It doesn't matter how religious we may be. Those are not the things that have set us free. It's knowing the truth about Jesus, what He did for us, that He died and paid the price for our sins. That is the only thing that has set us free. But she didn't flinch, and she didn't change the subject. She quoted John 14, 6, and she declared that Jesus is the only way of salvation. She said we must believe in order to go to heaven. Now the interviewer tried again. And he said, so you believe you have to accept Christ to go to heaven? And with a composed smile, she simply said, that's what the Bible says. Amen? It's hard to stand up and to proclaim that Jesus is the only way. But it's the truth. And we're not doing anybody any favors by backing down from that truth. Yes, we need to proclaim it with all the compassion of our hearts. But we still cannot back down from that truth. Joel Osteen encountered a similar interview. However, he did not fare so well. And I'm going to share this interview with you, not to give Joel Osteen a hard time or anything, but just to give a contrast in this interview. Larry King says, What if you're Jewish or Muslim and you don't accept Christ at all? John Olstein said, You know, I'm very careful about saying who would and wouldn't go to heaven. I don't know. King, if you believe you have to believe in Christ, they're wrong, aren't they? Olstein, well, I don't know if I believe they're wrong. I believe here's what the Bible teaches. And from the Christian faith, this is what I believe. But I just think that only God would judge a person's heart. I spent a lot of time in India with my father. I don't know all their religion, but I know they love God. And I, I don't know. I've seen their sincerity. So I don't know. I know for me and what the Bible teaches, I want to have a relationship with Jesus. Now, that's not a good answer to that question. Afterwards, I believe he realized that was not a good answer to that question. And I'm not here to rag on Brother Osteen. I'll, I'll share that in a minute. I believe what happened was he choked during that interview. He's talking to a, a, a Jewish person in front of millions of viewers and he has to tell them that unless they believe in Christ, they're not going to heaven. And, you know, we can judge somebody pretty easily sitting here with no spotlight on us, amen? But he had, he had a spotlight on him, and uh, I, I believe he choked. Uh, he posted in an open letter after the interview stating, It was never my desire or intention to leave any doubts as to what I believe and whom I serve. I believe with all my heart that it is only through Christ that we have hope in eternal life. I regret sincerely and apologize that I was unclear on the very thing in which I have dedicated my life. Now I know Joe Alstein has made a few mistakes, and he's not as straightforward as many think that he should be. But all I can say is this. I'm glad I don't have that bright of a spotlight on, spotlight on my life in my ministry. You know, it's easy to... To, to point fingers at people, amen? But, you know, if we were in their shoes, could we not make some mistakes ourselves, amen? So again, I'm not here trying to give anybody a hard time, but I'm just saying that today, more than ever, we need to stand up for the truth, amen? We need to stand up and we need to proclaim the truth. We need to be bold that Jesus is the only way that we will go to heaven because that's what Jesus said. How many believe he's telling the truth? Amen? If people do not know the truth, they will not be set free. They will remain in bondage of sin. And the end result is spiritual death. Those are high consequences. And we as believers have a responsibility to proclaim that truth. We don't need to shove it down anybody's throats. but We need to live it. And we need to be ready to give the reason for the hope that is within us. Again, you may think this is a, doesn't sound like a Christmas message. Well, I believe we're talking about the gift. And that gift involves the birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen.
And that's why he came into the world. We're not celebrating the birth of Jesus because he was a cute baby today. Amen. We celebrate a winner's birthday for that. We're celebrating because he came to save sinners. Amen. He came to save us that we might have eternal life in his name and by believing on his name. And I'll close with this verse. In John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called children of God. Many mistakenly call everybody children of God. But because of Adam's transgression, he separated mankind from God. And God wants to reconcile mankind back to him. And he does it one individual at a time. As we receive Jesus Christ, we are reconciled to God. And we have the right to be called children of God. It goes on to say, even to those that believe on His name. Yeah. It's all about Him. Amen? Amen? And it's about our making a decision, a choice, to receive Him as our Savior. To receive the gift of salvation. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Father, we thank You again for the gift of Your Son. We thank You for the salvation that You freely offer to each and every one of us. And Lord, I pray that even this morning as we celebrate the birth of Your Son, this Christmas Sunday, I pray that there be anyone in here that has not made a decision to receive Christ. I pray, God, that You would speak to their heart even in this moment. And Lord, that You would stir us to make that decision. With every head bowed and every eye closed before we dismiss. If you're here and you cannot say I made a decision for Christ, I have received Christ as my Savior, you would like to make that decision this morning. I will not embarrass you. I simply want to say a prayer with you. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you to lift your hand and put it right back down. Would there be anybody this morning that would say, that's me. I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to receive the gift of salvation. Would there be anybody this morning that has not done that, that would like to receive Jesus? I'm just sharing with somebody recently. It's easy to receive salvation. It's a gift. But it's not cheap. There was a high price paid that you might be able to receive that gift. Anybody at all before we close? I want you to know if you have any further questions about that, I would love to talk to you or... There's other people in here that would love to talk to you about that decision. And uh, feel free to, to tap any of us on the shoulder and say, hey, could I talk for a moment? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we again thank you for your love. And Lord, as uh, Cheryl was saying earlier, we thank you that it's your goodness that leads us to repentance, which simply means it leads us to turn around in direction in our lives to Quit walking away from you and start walking towards you. And Lord, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, during the hustle and bustle of this season, I pray that we would slow down to, again, think about the precious gift that came through the child, Jesus. And Lord, uh, we thank you again for our salvation and for all that you do for us. And we give you all the praise. And everybody said, Amen. 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 And thank you for coming. And for our guests, make sure you, you make them feel welcome this morning. And it's great to have you. And God bless you.